This video will cover Einstein's relativity law. It's one of the most difficult things to understand in the discipline of physics, science of physics, but it is a law. It has been verified in many different ways. It has many different manifestations to Einstein's relativity law, and we'll just be talking about one of those, that relative to the fact that time is not the same everywhere in the universe. As I said in the uh, Big Bang Law video. This is the second, Einstein's Relativity Law is the second video in a series of three that you need to understand a little bit about so that you can uh, understand the third and most important video in this trilogy of the cosmic clock. The cosmic clock will be important as we talk about biblical creation and the timing of creation. So Einstein's Relativity Law, which is now a, a scientific law, no longer just a theory, uh, basically uh, shows that the pace of time is not the same everywhere in the universe. Now this is the only equation I'll show you, but this is Einstein's relativity law in equational form for looking at two different observers of time, two different people living in two different parts of the universe, let's say, and one is sitting on Earth and the other one's traveling at velocity v here relative to the speed of light which is, is uniformly used as the symbol C. So one person is somewhere in the universe traveling at velocity V relative to the velocity C of light and is traveling at less than the speed of light. So each one of these people have with them let's just say a stopwatch, same brand stopwatch. So the person on earth measures a time interval, turns a stopwatch on, turns it off and the person in the universe does the same thing with an identical, identical uh, stopwatch, turns his stopwatch on, turns it off. And you think, well, obviously they're going to measure the same time interval if they're looking at each other, perhaps. Uh, and that's what we need to do in order for one to see, okay, you just turn your watch off, I'll turn my watch off. So they're looking at each other. But it turns out that they find dramatically different times. And that is what the relativity law is all about, and that's the thing that's hard for all of us to comprehend. Let's just look a little bit at this equation over here. Uh, it's just a relatively simple one over a square root equation with the, the two variables in there, velocity that you're traveling at and the velocity of light. If, one, if this ratio of V over C is very close to 1, if you're moving almost at the speed of light, then this whole expression here can quite very easily become a large number. Let's just say it gets to be a billion, one billion. If that's one billion, then a person traveling in the universe measures, let's just say, one day in his universe travel, one day of time on his stopwatch. Well, then this equation says that one day in the universe multiplied by one billion means that the person on Earth would have measured one billion days. Again, hard to conceive, hard to, to understand. This may be a place, if you're having difficulty looking at this equation, understanding the words I've said, it may be a place where you want to uh, stop the video with that double bar symbol on the lower left-hand side and just look at these definitions and then look at these things and think a little bit about it. But basically what it says is that the time passage is different in everywhere in the universe and it can be dramatically different if you're getting very close to the speed of light. Now here is a result of that equation, a result of the relativity theory that is again very hard to believe, very hard to understand that this could actually happen, but let's just go through it. It's known as Einstein's twins paradox. And here it is that we have two twins, they're born on Earth, they're identical, same age obviously, maybe a few seconds or minutes apart, but basically the same, same age on Earth. And they have two different lifetimes. Twin A stays on Earth for 100 years, lucky enough to live 100 years. Twin B takes off right away in a rocket and goes very close to the speed of light, 99.995% of the speed of light, and returns for the 100th birthday party of his brother. My logic would, our logic would say, well, the, the two 100-year-old twins meet and embrace and talk about what they missed, uh, not living the same place, same time on Earth. But instead, here's what happens. The 100-year-old brother greets his brother 
who is now barely a toddler. So they've had different ages, different lifetimes. The toddler, the, the twin B who rode on the rocket, ate a lot less meals, had a lot less breaths, etc., compared to his brother who lived on Earth. That seems impossible. Now, this particular experiment has not been done, obviously, but similar experiments have done been done with two atomic clocks sitting there together and recording exactly the same time very precisely. One clock is given to a jogger who takes it on a jog going a little bit faster than the one that was the clock that remains sitting, so let's just say on a table. When that jogger returns because his velocity and the clock's velocity with him has been higher than the clock that is stationary, his clock has slowed ever so slightly. And that is just an absolute amazing thing. The same sort of thing was done with airplanes, with clocks flying in airplanes in various directions and various heights, and found that indeed clocks do slow as a result of moving too fast or moving faster with one versus the other. So it's been this sort of a thing, as paradox has been proven experimentally, but not in as dramatic a form as we're looking at in this picture here. Now, a very important concept that needs to be uh, highlighted here as a result of that equation is that at, if one were traveling exactly at the speed of light, that time has no meaning. That time loses its identity as a, a, a phenomenon that's passing on its way. Uh, now, a particle of light or light waves, whether you think of it as a particle or a wave, uh, is a mystery because it's a particle and a wave at the same time. It is control of the passage of time, which is, you know, why? Why does light, the speed of light, control how fast you're moving relative to the speed of light control passage of time? I didn't mention earlier that also gravitation ha affects it. The larger the gravitation, the lower the gravitation, that time speeds up and slows down as well. We'll get into that, but but that is another thing that's not well understood, or, or the why of it, at least, anyway. And another thing about light is that everyone measures the same value. As long as they're traveling less than the speed of light, they measure the same value, unlike other phenomena where people on speeding trains and baseballs and things like that, throwing baseballs in one direction or another, things add and subtract. Well, the same thing does not happen with light. It's uh, same value measured by everyone who is traveling less than the speed of light. And with this weird, unknown, ununderstood, completely behavior of light, it leads to this expression here that if someone or something moves at the speed of light, time passage means nothing. Time is undefined. Time slows down. And that is something that is also somewhat inconceivable, how time can stop and not pass. And again, we'll see that later on in the biblical creation videos. So in summary, uh, the passage of time varies with one speed relative to the speed of light. The faster you go, slower time proceeds. And we don't know why that is, but it is. It is a phenomenon that uh, Einstein discovered, Einstein theorized, and Einstein proved that this happens. Speed of light controls the passage of time. And a continuing mystery, mystery is that the nature of light. We know we know how light works, we know where what it does when it gets somewhere and all that business, but we don't know the why. We know the how it does what it does, but we don't know why light does what it does. So that concludes the, the video on Einstein's relativity law, which is a well-developed scientific principle, not a theory, just a theory.